Well, it's good to be with you. Today, I'd just like to talk to you about what to worry about. A lot of things we can worry about, a lot of things that concern us. Sometimes we hear the phrase, don't worry about it, and what exactly does that mean? Well, it usually means don't, don't give your time or energy to this. And usually it's because we want you to give your time or your energy or your attention to something else. You remember in the Bible with Mary and Martha? And Mary was worried about a lot of things. She was concerned. It was consuming her and taking her attention. And it was things that were physical. It was the, the meal. It was the preparation. It was, I need help. And, and those were all valid things. But, but Jesus kind of told her, don't worry about those things. But Martha, on the other hand, was worried about some things. She was worried about hearing from Jesus. She was worried about the relationship with Jesus and, and knowing him and knowing his words. And so uh, we see that she was able to worry about the right things. And so as we think about it, I'd like us to worry about the right things today. I think about the disciples when they were with Jesus in the boat. You remember that the storm began to rage and they were, they were scared. They were scared for their lives. They were scared they were going to drown. And I can understand that. If I was in a boat that was going down, I'd be scared for my life too. And yet, in that story, we see that Jesus was in the front of the boat. What was he doing? He was asleep. He, he wasn't concerned about that. That wasn't his biggest worry. And in fact, the disciples woke him up and they said, Don't you care? Aren't you worried that we're going to drown? And Jesus calmed the storm. Now, Jesus did have concerns he had worries. We don't think of it as, as he wasn't afraid of anything, but he had a focus. And we see that as he prayed in the Garden of Eden, excuse me, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's praying and he's about to face death. He's about to face uh, death on a cross and that physical death. But there's something even bigger as he come to the world to give his life to be the lamb that was slain for, for all men's sin, that the sin of the world was going to be laid upon him, that he was, going to be, he was going to be separated from the Father and say, why have you forsaken me? That spiritual part, he says, that was so intense. And Jesus prayed. And it says that he prayed as, as if it was sweating drops of blood. Intense. And ironically, where do we find the disciples in that scene? Asleep. It's very frustrating when somebody doesn't worry about the things you're worried about. I want you to worry about what I worry about. And today, I'd like us to consider worrying about what Jesus worried about. And he taught a lot about worry. And in Matthew chapter 6, in the, his Sermon on the Mount, we see some, some clues for us there. And one of the things is he tells us, first of all, what not to worry about. He says, I don't want you to worry about food. Well, I like to worry about food. I don't want you to worry about clothes, what you're going to wear. Boy, I think about that. I, uh, sometimes I'm sitting at home right now, and I'm, I'm getting up, and I might be in my gym shorts, and i got to go somewhere. I say, oh, boy, I better put something different on. He says, I don't want you to worry about how you look and, and what you're eating. Not that, that we don't have food or we don't have clothes. He says, I don't want you to worry about, he said, even money and how you're going to get, you can't serve God and money. He says, I don't want those things to take your attention. And maybe we could even think about it today. I don't want you to worry about even your health and that that's the biggest issue. Those things are important to us, but he says, I don't want you to worry over them. Why? Because he said, there's a couple reasons. One is you can't do anything about it anyway. He said, you can't even add a foot to your height. You can't add a minute to your life. You can't do anything. Boy, we recognize that right now. Things happen. Have you been in an earthquake before? You can't do anything. We've seen fires rage around and, and just tear up communities and land, and there's nothing you can do to stop that. He says, you can't do anything. Is there anything you can do to, to keep from getting sick? Well, there's not really a lot. You, you can do a little bit, but... You can't really change some things. He says, I don't want you to worry about it because you can't change anything anyway. And he said, another reason is because your father already knows what you need. He's already taking care of you. In fact, don't you see that he cares about you more than the birds of the air or the flowers of the field? And he'll take care of you. Just 
trust him. So those are the things we're not to worry about. But what do we worry about? Well, he says, I want you to, to just worry about being. And I, I think about some of the things that Jesus talked about. First of all, being right. He said, you need to worry about being right with me. Being right with your heavenly father. He talked to the disciples and he said, don't worry about those who can kill the body. Pretty serious. But he says, but worry about your heavenly father who has your soul in his hands. Who This relationship with him is more important than anything else. He says, worry about being right. Today, can I encourage you to, to worry about being right with him? Now, I'm not talking about being good. I'm not talking about worry about putting your life together. I'm saying worry about being right with him. We're told of two that approached Jesus. One was a, a tax collector and one was a Pharisee. And it says that the Pharisee approached and he wasn't worried about being right. He thought he had everything together. He, he was worried about his reputation. He was worried about how he looked maybe even to Jesus. But it says that that tax collector approached Jesus and he was worried about being right. Didn't even deserve to be in his presence. Bowed his head and said, have mercy on me. And Jesus said that was the one who went away right with God. He went away righteous. Worry about being right. Don't worry about the things that are going to happen. We can't change them. We can't affect those things. There are certain things in our lives that we have no control over. You have no control over how people treat you. We have no control over our economy. We have no control over our health. But we have control over being right with God. I encourage you today to be right with him. He said to just trust in him, to look to him, to believe, to turn towards him. He said not only are we to worry about being right with him, we're to worry about being ready, which is similar. But he says, I'm coming soon and I want you to be ready. I want you to be looking for me. And looking for my return. And, and, and not just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Not just doing things to do it. But looking for me. And following. And living. Knowing that I'm coming. But that will change the way we worry. There's some things that just don't matter anymore. Because we know that he's coming soon. I recently had a windshield in my car that was broken. It had a big giant crack across the whole thing, and I, I knew it had to be replaced. And so as I was driving down the road with that broken windshield and it was all messed up, I followed a truck and, and another rock came and hit my windshield. And you know what I said? I don't care. Because that windshield is going to be gone soon. Any day it's going to be replaced and I'm going to have a new one. And so truck, you can hit me with all the rocks you want and it doesn't matter. Jesus said, I'm coming soon. Don't worry about the things in this life. Don't worry about those things. Don't put your treasures on this earth. He said, but put your treasure in heaven, in the relationship with me, in the relationship you have with others, and leading them to me. I want you to be ready. And finally, I want you to be real. Jesus was all about our heart. He said, I, I don't want you to just pretend. I don't want you to just go through the motions like that tax collector and tell me all that you've done. Jesus said, many will come to me on that day and say, didn't we prophesy in your name? And didn't we cast out demons in your name? And he'll say, away from me, I never knew you. He wants us. He wants the real us. I love that song. He knows my name. He wants to know you. Be real with him. Not going through the motions. Not pretending. Not even being in a church service. But standing before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, come into my heart and my life and be Lord of all. Can I encourage you today? Jesus said this, seek first my kingdom. And all these things will be added unto you. All these things will take care of themselves. Don't worry about tomorrow, he said. 
Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Let's be right with him. Let's be ready. And let's be real. God bless you on this day. Look forward to being with you again soon. God bless.